com. LSU Athletics back on the the main burner because they're back on campus to a degree with that now being allowed, convening, lifting weights, workouts to a degree, whatever the case may be, it's all starting to come together of sorts, which, of course, includes football, most notably the defending national champions preparing to defend their national title. Joining us now to talk about LSU Athletics, outstanding columnist for the Advocate, Scott Rabelais. Scott, listen, thanks for the time. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Kenny. Thank, thanks for having me. And, and I'm in NOLA.com on, on NOLA uh, and the Times Picayune as well. So we don't want to, of course, don't want to forget our, our little New Orleans readers. There you go, across the board yeah, with the merger that's took to take place. And, of course, it's been a big plus for communities around Louisiana, from Acadiana to Baton Rouge to New Orleans. Well, obviously, these are interesting times and not being able to gather. Uh, talking about football first and foremost, National Championship team, 14 guys in the draft, other guys signing, unbelievable loss to try to mitigate, and yet there is a bunch of talent coming back on this LSU football team. Well, there is, and I, and I, and I, I, I think momentum – is a real thing in, in sports, you know, good or good or bad. And I think momentum and confidence is something that this LSU team goes into 2020 with uh, in abundance. Uh, I think that, you know, you have players who know how to win, know how to win the big games. I mean, they couldn't have played a much tougher schedule last year, playing seven teams that were ranked in the top 10 at the time. And, uh, and you're right. They, they, there is a lot of talent back, especially a receiver with Jamar Chase and uh, Terrace Marshall. Ed Ogeron spent a lot of the, the, the offseason talking up uh, uh, Racy McMath, a senior, uh, as well. Uh, you have a, a lot of new faces on the offensive line, except for Austin Deculus at, at right tackle. Defensively, um, defensively, you, you know, they're, they're really good in, 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 sp- in spots that, that are key right up the middle, I think, with uh, Tyler Shelvin at defensive tackle, Jacoby Stevens uh, at safety, and then, of course, Derek Stimling on, the, on the outside, and obviously a huge um, – uh, yeah, so some huge losses, <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, but uh, but th- there is talent there. It wasn't just the starters, and they're only returning seven. It wasn't just the starters who played last year. They had a, you had a lot of guys get experience in games because, frankly, LSU blew out a lot of people, and so that's go- going to be a big help to them uh, moving forward this year. Uh, I-, I don't think LSU is going to fall off the map. I think they're going to have a-, a good year. I think they expect anything like last year, which may have been the best season in college football history would be unfair, but uh, I don't think people should expect uh, them to be in dire straits either. When you look at this football team, everyone, and I mean everyone, is pointing to the quarterback position as being the key to whether this LSU team can contend for an SEC title and a national title again. And, of course, that's accurate. Miles Brennan, three years in the system. We've heard everything. Look, he's put on the weight. He knows the system inside out. He has a better arm than Joe Burrow and so forth and so on, and yet, can anyone give us an accurate depiction of what we can expect? Uh, what would you say to that, and what would you expect from him? Well, it doesn't. Uh, if you can't have the, if you can't have the uh, the teacher, have the disciple, right? So that might be that might be the next best thing. Look, a lot of schools are facing some you know, some very interesting quarterback situations around the conference. I mean, you, you think around the SEC, that like, who is the top quarterback in the conference? Is it Kellen Mond at Texas A&M? He's certainly been up and down. Is, is it Trask at Florida? Is is it uh, is it uh, the guy who replaced uh, Tua Tagovailoa at, at Alabama? You know, it's, you, you don't know. Miles Brennan could could be one of those guys. In fact, he started with better Heisman odds in the offseason. I think he was like 28-1 to 1 compared to Joe Burrow this time last year, who was 200-1. to 1. Uh, Miles is, is a talented quarterback. He has he has had to put on weight. Well, you know, I can't imagine what that must be like. But uh, he, he's definitely beefed up. He he's learned a lot from Joe being being around Joe. Uh, he does have a stronger arm. Uh, I, I think he's been a good student of the game, and I think he's been in, you know they've been involved in a lot of offseason you know workouts on their own as much as they could you know before uh, finally getting back on campus, and then they'll they'll start practicing again soon. But uh, yeah, the, the 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 issue is to me you know. When you get in those those situations, those tough situations, Joe just exhibited that toughness. And I think of the touchdown pass he threw to Clyde edwards layer right before halftime in the Alabama game. He, the Alabama had a rusher coming free off the edge. He knew he was going to take a shot right right in the face mask. 
He still delivered that pass and, you know, put LSU up by 20 at the half. He threw that touchdown pass to, to Thaddeus Moss right before halftime in the national championship game at the Superdome, knowing he was going to get a shot from that, uh, that Clemson linebacker. And Joe wasn't quite right for, I think, the first half of the, the third quarter uh, after, after that shot. But he, knew, he delivered that pass. Is Miles Brennan going to ex- uh, uh, display that kind of toughness, the kind of toughness that Joe e- exhibited that I think permeated the football team? I think Joe Burrow's attitude and demeanor and, and style – we went through that team, and, and can Miles Brennan make make it his kind of team now? That's a question we can't answer until, until the fall. But I, I think the tools are there, the pieces are there for him to have a very good season. Visiting with Scott Rabelais of The Advocate and NOLA.com, 2601061, to join us. When you look at the LSU defense, what would be the, the biggest concern right now prior to entering the season from your perspective? Well, you know, you're going from you're switching from base three four under Dave Aranda, who's now the head coach at Baylor, to a base four three under under Bo Pelini, who's returning. LG, uh, he was of course there under Les Miles for the first three years, won that PCS title. That, that's a con- that's a concern. You know, making a transition now. Bo Bo has said, you know, you know, no one's in the modern game is just wedded to formation of the other people are very multiple all the time he said you'll see lsu in three man fronts and there'll be five man fronts and four man fronts just like you had uh, under aranda and he said a lot of the terminology is not changing and i, I think but I, I think that that's an overall concern though in that you're you're changing some things and they only had three spring practices before they had to shut everything down and obviously uh, schools the ncaa has said you know, they're going to give schools i think six weeks to prepare for the season so you're going to have that some of the time that wasn't going to be in the spring is going to not take place in July and August, so that's going to be good for for LSU. But I, but I think the, you know, getting that that down will, will will be an issue. I think um, I, th- I think uh, linebacker has uh, you know looked like a big concern and just got wiped out by guys you know graduating or turning pro uh, going early. Jabril Cox, uh, the the All American linebacker from North Dakota State, uh, transferred in. Uh, yeah, he he uh, could have. Some people thought he could have been a first round draft pick, maybe uh, certainly very high draft pick if he just chosen to go that route. But he decided to come in for one year at LSU. That that's going to help a lot. And uh, I, I want to see, you know, if they can find that that edge rusher to to replace uh, Caleb on Chesson adequately. Uh, you, you know, you have like uh, you know, is it going to be like uh, Marcel Brooks up the edge or somebody like that? So I, I uh, Coach uh, Ogeron has talked a lot about B.J. Ojolari, but a freshman, you think he's going to be backing up Justin Thomas at, at the end. So it, 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 that remains to be seen. But those are things, I think just getting down the, the system, getting down what Pelini wants from his defense, especially in coverage, uh, and then and then finding an adequate replacement for, for, for Chesson. And, and they have to hope that, that uh, Cox can come in and be what they need right in the middle uh, as, as a linebacker is going to be important. Much has been made about the coaching losses in particular. Joe Brady and Dave Aranda, it, it seems to me that they've mitigated those losses pretty well with the guys that they've hired. What's your perception there? I, I think so. I mean, I, I think you know, it's it's important to remember, you know, the defense wasn't the strength of the team last year. You knew they'd be kind of pressured. They'd be uh, stressed because the offense moved so quickly and they scored so quickly and they put the defense back on the field a lot. And, you know, there were some games where, you know, they just kind of gave up a lot more yards and points than you figure from LSU, LSU to do. I, I think it'll be fine under Pelini. Scott Linehan replacing Joe Brady. Uh, you're talking about an experienced guy. Is he going to have to be – he's not going to need to be as innovative. I don't think they're planning to fix something that they don't feel is broken. And it's, and it's important to remember this, this is Steve, still Steve Insminger calling the uh, calling the plays. I remember I talked to the guy who did the uh, – he did the, the the documentary on LSU season for the SEC Network. It came out uh, earlier this year, and I talked to him about it before it debuted. And and they got to be they get to mic those guys up in the booth. And he said it was interesting watching the dynamic between Insminger and Brady. Steve Insminger called the you know it was his offense plan. Obviously, Joe Brady brought in a lot of things from from the, that he'd learned at, at Penn State, and that he certainly learned with the Saints. But it was it was Steve's plan, and then of course Joe would call, do some of the the red zone calls and, and that sort of thing, which you know I, I guess I guess Linehan could be expected to do some of those as well. But I, I don't think they have to make any wholesale changes, and, and else you can't go back. I I just don't think this is you, know, you, you you can go back to the kind of offense that they used to have. I think they'll continue to to be pressing the issue with the with the passing game. 
So I, I think I think they'll be okay uh, yeah, with the coaches. I, obviously, Brady left something behind, and so did Dave Aranda, that will that will continue to benefit LSU, uh, despite the fact that they have had a change in these key uh, positions. Last week, Scott Woodward having, you know, his powwow with the advocate regarding the football season. He was bullish on the fact that there not only will be a football season, but that there will be fans in the stands. Uh, how do you view that? It seems to have been well-received. Uh, it's optimistic, but I, I think he's accurate. The question is exactly what it's going to look like, and I don't know that any of us knows the answer. No, I, I, they don't have – he was free to admit they don't have all the answers at LSU yet either. Through this whole thing, and back in April, I talked to a bunch of athletic directors from around South Louisiana. I just at LSU, but at, at Tulane and, and UNO and Nichols and uh, Louisiana Lafayette and some of the other schools. And um, – and Scott was always one of the more optimistic ones about the fact that they could play a season. He's always been kind of a glass half full uh, uh, with, a, with his approach to to dealing with the pandemic and getting back together. And when we talked last week, it was three months and one day before kickoff uh, uh, on September 5th against Texas San Antonio. And so uh, it's always been a question of to him with him, not if it's going to be football, but you know, can, you know, how are you going to get it done? And will the, how many fans will we be able to have in the stands? And I think he was, I, I was, I, that was one thing people said, what did he say that took you by surprise in that hour that, that we did the town hall? Uh, and, and was that, you know, he said he hopes to have a lot of people in the stands, now, a lot of people to, to me. And we talked about the Miami Dolphins proposal to have like a quarter of their stadium, which is like, you know, 65,000 in the stands at Iowa State's. It said, I think, half of a 61,000-seat stadium. So I think, you know, going from there, a minimum of, you know, 25%, probably more than 50, and if they can do better than that, I think they, I think they will. It's just a question of how many people it, – it, it starts to become logistics in terms of how many people can you get in before the game. You have to check everyone or make them go through some kind of – ask some questions or check their temperatures, do something. I know that's one thing they're planning to do with the media. And so and, and, and just recently getting people in, in, before a game. So I think uh, I, I think seeing now how are they going to decide that, who gets to go in, and, and, and you know, which people go or not, are they going to use like the TAF uh, you know, priority points plan or something like that? They, he didn't reveal that, and I, I, understandably, uh, there's still time to work that out. But I think he said by the middle of July they need to have a plan in place to, to let people know and, and to be able to work from there to figure out how they're going to do this, uh, you know, and, and in addition to, of course, to testing of the players and coaches and staff to make sure everyone's staying safe. Speaking of Scott Woodward, everyone's still waiting for the shoot to drop with basketball, if and when it does, or if it does at all. And, of course, Scott Woodward's approached that with a cautious and, and we'll find out later approach. Meanwhile, Will Wade's put together another outstanding recruiting class Dick Vitale continues to put information out there that it's coming and so forth. And and if it is, I guess, number one, why is it taking so long? And number two, uh, if something does get – is forthcoming, I should say, uh, I suspect Scott Woodward would probably take appropriate action. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, they reworked Wade's contract when they reinstated him to say even if there is a letter you know, uh, of inquiry, that they could fire him for cause. And well, Wade had to accept that. So that's a uh, – that that's a big provision that yeah that else you can say can walk away from him if, if they feel like it, 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 the heat is too hot. I I don't get a sense of uh, from LSU and I know one wants to talk on the record of course. So I don't get a sense from LSU or people around LSU that they're overly concerned. You know there was the HBO documentary that came out uh, where you actually get to hear the the audio tapes of him talking to the guy on the phone and and it was all the things that you that you read in the, in the Yahoo Sports stories from last year that led to him being suspended and he was suspended because he wouldn't talk to LSU about them under some bad advice, I think from, from his attorney at the time, and he were even replacing that guy and he eventually got reinstated. Um, you know, it's, uh, I don't think LSU is expecting to get caught by surprise or any of this stuff, but yeah, could there be a letter of inquiry or something like that or some allegations? Yes, there very well could be. It, it is again, as you said, taking a long time, and uh, I think it's an interesting point to remember, though, that that uh, Javante Smart was one of the players mentioned in this. And Javante Smart was, of course, held out of of uh, they were, they were going to hold him out of the Vanderbilt game in the, in the SEC. Uh, I'm sorry, the SEC tournament in Nashville, and then they reinstated him at the last minute right before they played Florida, and he played 
in that game and in the LSU's three NCAA tournament games, and of course played all of this season. So I think it was interesting. From and LSU is a very, a very circumspect, very uh, you know they err on the side of caution in their their compliance department. And the fact that he's played all those games since I think is is if a positive mark if you're an LSU fan. But it doesn't mean that that something couldn't happen or that that eventually the NCAA could uncover something else. And they are going through it, seeing these other programs and and, and hitting them. And, and, you know, it's, you know, I I think there's probably something out there. But, again, sometimes this is a matter of what you think and what you can prove. And it could be uh, come down to a matter of what the NCAA can prove. Final thought, of course, the baseball draft going on right now, only five rounds. And everybody's watching to see what happens with Daniel Cabrera and Cole Henry in particular because they're the two likely guys to go inside these five rounds. But certainly LSU's had some players that have left the program. The numbers game is a part of it. Being able to get on the field is another part of it. It certainly looks like LSU's primed to have a really good team next year regardless. And and if these guys don't get drafted in the first two rounds, you wonder if, in fact, they may come back. Yeah, I mean, you have have some guys like – you know, like Devin Fontenot, who, who's uh, our, our Wilson Alexander, who covers baseball, projected him as a as a fifth rounder. Could he come back? AJ Labus, uh, he's a draft eligible sophomore. You know, you know projected you kind know, of one of the later rounds. It's just so interesting. I mean, you know, only uh, only a hundred something players are going to get drafted, or a couple of hundred players are going to get drafted compared to like twelve hundred as usual. And then the recruits that are coming, the NCAA today said that they're going to give the uh, college baseball teams. So, some some breathing room in terms of you know roster restrictions and stuff like that. It's going to be very interesting. I, I, I think anybody who knows right now, and of course, once we see the draft take place over the next two two days, we might have a little better idea. But anybody who thinks they know right now what's going to happen and, and who are the best teams and stuff like that is uh, is just blowing smoke because it, 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 there's never been a college baseball season like this, like we're going to have in 2021. And there there's not, just with all these teams returning players who's not not returning. It's going to, going to be fascinating, and all the extra players to, to, to pick from. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think LSU had some had some some strengths and a couple of weaknesses. You know, their their hitting didn't look great last year, but the pitching staff was was very strong. And uh, we'll see if they can bolster uh, the the hitting going into this coming season. You know, they have some recruits like uh, like Drew Romo, a catcher out of out of uh, Texas, who they're, they're looking at very hard to see if he will come or not. And the player I hope comes, though, uh, Kenny, is is Blake Money, a uh, uh, out of Tennessee, six uh, seven, uh, throws like uh, like a, ni- a low nineties fastball, and and hopefully his brother Cash Money will come watch him play. That's that's <laughs> really unique. You can't make these things up. I, I, I'm not. No. Rooting, I, I can't root for LSU, but I'm hoping for this as a writer. Well, I mean, there's so many props to be had there if in fact that occurs it's true <laughs> looking forward to it we we'll always look forward to reading scott rabelais work and the advocate and you can follow him on twitter at rabelais adv that's rabelais adv does an outstanding job scott listen thank you so much for the visit keep up the good work and we'll talk again soon thanks kenny i'm not writing much in the papers right now i'm working on a book project for the paper we're doing the thing on best lsu players by the number which mm-hmm. will come out right before christmas so um uh, books take a while to, to work on, so hopefully people will, will be patient and uh, we'll see them again soon. You got it, Scott. Thanks again. Thank you. You got it.